and I'm witnessing those units for years and years and years, those troops. And it's really, you could feel it by the way they talk, by the way they behave, but you saw nothing. And he chooses to go to this unit. And he thinks that he's accepted, I'm not sure he's really accepted. They want Israel without the Arabs, except of the Abu Uriah family. They want a Jewish state without any other minorities except of him. And this except of him will very soon turn into including him, as his uncle was upset and disappointed. I think also I blame his father for pushing him to this. Because he lives in a denial. He goes to Hebron, not only this unit, but he goes to Hebron, which is, let me tell you, the worst place in Israel, the lowest place in Israel. If anyone has a doubt about the Israeli occupation, please go, in its nature, please go to Hebron. I don't think that there is one decent person, one human being who can go to Hebron and come back and think that justice is practiced there. And he is there and he doesn't see anything. In the hardcore of the Israeli occupation, in the most brutal uh, uh, outcome of it, with a ghost town that it's totally based on injustice, cruelty, brutality, and transfer. And he serves there and he doesn't see anything. So while his friends, the Jewish one, the Jewish soldiers are totally brainwashed, like 18 people, 18 years old people can be, he comes with a different background and still he doesn't see anything. Now the question of serving in the army or not, I think that if one day Israel will be faithful to its Arab citizens, the Arab citizens will be very faithful to Israel. But Israel is not faithful to its Arab citizens. And I don't think we should expect them to be faithful to Israel. For sure not to go and to serve in the army. When they fight many times direct family members. It's not just a theoretical concept of your own people that you depress while your military service. It's many times your direct relatives. To expect this to happen is really much too much. And I think that most of the Israelis understand it. And therefore, while there is a growing demand that the Haredim will join the army, you hardly hear it except of very, very small groups, you hardly hear this demand from the Arabs, even the extreme right-wingers. They don't want to see the Arabs in the army because they understand also the consequences. This is one step forward toward all kind of things that I'm not sure that the right-wingers are ready for it. To sum up, the day that Israel will be a real democracy, with real equality, with real justice, without the occupation, at that day, we can consider really equal rights and equal, equal uh, um, um, what? duties. We are so far from this day that I think Isaac will meet in some more festivals here until this will become relevant. We'll be happy to have you back. Now, we, let's talk about uh, Amir specifically. Do you think that? Uh, that he has, he has a hope that uh, he's going to have a, a different future in Israel because of his service? Uh, definitely not. I think he loses more, him specifically, by going to the army because he loses both societies. He will be an outcast in Saknim and an outcast in the Jewish society because of being an Arab. And I just for a second want to second what, um, what Gideon said. Um, because it's very important to say two things from two different angles. The first one is, Amir is going to the army in this naive belief that that would give him the ticket into Jewish society. And that's what many people say when they say, yeah, the Arabs have to serve if they want to be part of society. 
Today, I believe that if we want to glue societies together, it should start in preschool. People should study together. It can't be separate systems. You do not glue two societies with a gun. Um, that's one aspect. And the other aspect, which is very complex, um, when people come up to me and say, yeah, they have to serve, I ask them back, will they be equal in the army? Will you want to see them in the intelligent unit? Would you let them be uh, a pilot in the Air Force? I think the answer to that is no. So it's very, very complex. Just to add one more thing, he's also going to lose his identity. Because he will be neither nor. It's not only that both societies will not accept him. He will not know who he is. You know what, Gideon, this is the only point I disagree with you. Because I think Amir, both Amir and his father stated they have this dream of being both enthusiastic Israelis and proud Arabs. And I think they know what their identity <coughs> is. And I think we just can't accept it. So I would like to raise just one more question. Why did you do this film? <laughs> so, basically, I, I, I was asking myself, what price is a human being ready to pay in order to belong? And um, just one more thing, um, and I have to tell you, and this is very important for me, and I hope I manage to do it, this is not a political film, and it's on purpose, because we live in a political context, and I didn't make a film for a captive audience, because I feel we have enough of that, and I want just to put a mirror, so people from all agendas, all spectrum of the political map can relate and maybe feel, and through feeling, maybe learn something. I'd love to open it now to your questions. So I have a question over here. Actually, I have two questions, if you don't mind. Great film, by the way. So questionable one, if you look at the, you look maybe at the, the, the Arab people, and you look, there's probably two most dislocated people you can think of, Palestinians. One, and I would say potentially Israeli Arabs next. But what is really their identity and the concept of, you know, where they really belong? So I wanted to get your thoughts on that. And then secondly, just from a, um, you know, you're very realistic and you're very realistically pessimistic about what what the future holds, whether it's Arab Israelis and, even, you know, what's going to happen with Israel. At what point do you think that if the army is not an entry point, I totally agree with you, you've got to talk this very early on. But, if the army is not even an entry point, are you, are you completely pessimistic? Or do you think there is any chance at all that there's going to be some kind of resolution? Um, um, I, can I start with the second because I remember the second? Um, uh, I am pessimist in the past. In the past years, I'm growing more and more pessimist because I see what's going on. And as I stated before, I think the only way to start some kind of resolution is through early age, through the educational system. You have to understand it's so separated in Israel. It's really, I mean, the Arab schools have a, a Jewish curriculum, but they don't study with Jews. They're afraid from the Jews as much as the Jews are afraid from them. And Arabic is an official language in Israel, but no, no Jewish students study it. So, what I'm basically saying, it should start in preschool. And when we'll get to the army, we'll think. That's for the second question. The first question you were asking about identity. And maybe here Gideon could be more of an assistant because I think it's very individual. And many times when I speak with my, um, with my uh, Arab friends, who are Israeli citizens mostly, I, when I ask them, where, where, do you, where do you see yourselves? Most of them say, well, it depends who the audience is. I think that we face today a situation which after 67 years of existence of Israel and 45 years of the occupation, that the Palestinian people is totally segregated and partly because of a very systematic effort by Israel. Gaza is separated from the West Bank. 
The Jerusalemites are separated from the West Bank. The Israeli Arabs, so-called, are separated from the West Bank and Gaza. The diaspora is separated from Palestine. And uh, in this framework, those groups are becoming more and more separated and caring more and more about their own interests. For sure it's true about the what's called 48 Arabs, mainly the Israeli citizens, the Arab Israeli citizens. They are more and more disconnected from the Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza. They have less and less interest in them. They care much more about fighting for their good life and equality and better economical conditions and they are doing very, very little, or less and less, for the Palestinians or against the Israeli occupation. In this way, I think that the Jewish solidarity throughout history is much more impressive, much more solid, than the Palestinian solidarity between all the fractions of the Palestinian society. And where is your hope, Gidon? What is your hope? How can things change? My hope was taken 